except the body. For that, I needed the help of Ron Wade. As a child, Ron mummified a rat as a science project, my kind of kid. Today, as director of Maryland State Anatomy Board, he provides surgeons with cadavers to work out life-saving procedures. Not only did I get the body, I got something far more important. Ron is a co-worker. But no one had done anything like this in 2,000 years, and neither of us were sure it would work. The plan was to replicate, in every detail, a top-of-the-line ancient mummification, one that would have been used for a king. The first surgical procedure was to remove the brain through the nose. Ron and I inserted a long straight instrument into the nasal cavity and tapped it till it broke through into the cranium. Then we took a tool shaped like a bent coat hanger and rotated it in the cranium till the brain was practically liquid so that when we turned the cadaver over, it ran out the nose. I'm pretty sure that that's how the Egyptians did it. The second surgical procedure was the removal of the internal organs. Herodotus, our Snoopy Greek tourist, says the Egyptians used obsidian for the incision. And I think he was right. When I tried the obsidian blade, it was actually sharper than any scalpel I had ever used. But I think this is well. The abdominal incisions on mummies are small, only about three inches. But the liver is a very large organ. Can you get it out through such a small incision? Eventually, the liver came out, but it wasn't easy. Now the body had to be dehydrated as quickly as possible. That's where the natron came in. We rinsed the abdominal cavity with our Nigerian palm wine and inserted chunks of incense from the spice bazaar. The body was entirely covered with natron to help dehydrate quickly. But for how long? The Bible gives a clue. It tells us that Jacob died in Egypt and was mourned for 70 days. But the mummification took 40 days. Some of those days were taken up with surgical procedures and the wrapping. So we figured 35 days in natron would be about right. The cadaver was placed in a controlled environment, much like the Valley of the Kings. The temperature was kept constant at about 105 degrees, with the humidity around 25. Did you ever wonder why a mummy looks like it does? Is it the result of the embalming? Or is it the result of 3,000 years in a tomb? No one knew, but our experiment would settle that. When we returned and began removing the natron, which had caked solid, the mummy's hand emerged first. And as the rest of the body became visible, it was remarkable how much like an ancient Egyptian mummy it looked. Now we knew it was the result of embalming that made a mummy appear as it does, not for thousands of years. But the biggest surprise was yet to come. The mummy still had a little moisture in it. We could feel it in the larger muscles. Was the 35 days not enough time? we decided to put the mummy back in the tomb to dehydrate it completely. More than a month later, when we began the final wrapping, we got the surprise. Ron and I had decided to wrap it like a royal mummy, with the hands crossed over the chest. But we couldn't do it. The totally dehydrated mummy was too stiff. Yeah, that's the skin crack. Try the other one. That's why the embalmers took the body out of natron after 35 days. The mummy was mostly dehydrated, so it wouldn't decay, but there was just enough moisture so it could be easily manipulated for wrapping.
while we were doing it, it was more a surgical procedure. We weren't emotionally involved, we were just doing the job. But seeing the mummy and seeing that it really looked like a mummy, that was really quite something. We didn't just get a mummy. We obtained a lot of information about tools and surgical techniques used in ancient Egyptian mummification. But the project isn't over. Today, friends at St. Luke's Hospital in Bethlehem, PA, are using cutting-edge technology designed for living patients to CAT scan the mummy Ron Wade and I made. Just so we have it. Okay. A CAT scan we'll is a series of thin x-rays that can be manipulated by a computer. And now we can actually look at his workstation, right. John Posh takes the information from the scan and reconstructs the face in three dimensions on the screen. You know, when we went in, we, we, we broke through you know, both sides, and we just want to see what the damage looks like. We can compare it with an ancient mummy, and then if his mummy, if the ancient mummy looks like our mummy, then we know they went bilaterally. And you know, they, right, right, you know a lot more. Posh's space-age scanner allows us to look into the past and figure out how the Egyptians did it. Do the broken nose bones in our mummy look like those in an ancient Egyptian mummy? Uh, right here, actually, that, where that little cursor is, is where they went in through the nose anteriorly and broke right through the, the skull. And you can see it right here. Yeah, we'd love it. We've got a match. Now we know for sure how the Egyptians removed the brain. <laughs> This is just the beginning of scientific studies on our mummy. He'll be around for a long time, and he doesn't have to worry about tomb robbers.